Monday, March 20. Everlasting Life. And today we're back in the studio at home. It's much quieter here. As human beings, and whether we like it or not, an eternity awaits us. And according to the Bible, this eternity will come in one of two manifestations, at least for each of us individually. Either eternal life or eternal death. That's it. No middle ground. No straddling a bit one side or another. Instead, it is one life or the other death. This truly is a case of all or nothing. Read Romans 6.23 and John 3.16. What options are presented to us? Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It is hard to imagine two starker or more distinct choices, isn't it? Chances are that if you're reading this, you have chosen eternal life or certainly are thinking about it. God has the unique ability to do whatever he says he can do to fulfill all his promises. Our part is simply to believe him, rest upon the merits of Jesus and by faith obey his word. Read John 14, verses 1 to 3. What is the Lord's counsel to us in verse 1, and what does he promise to us in verses 2 and 3? John 14, beginning at verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled, you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and... If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. In the final days of his earthly ministry, Jesus spoke these amazing words of hope and courage to his disciples. These words would lift their spirits in times of discouragement and trial. They should do the same for us. Jesus came from heaven, went back to heaven, and has promised us in John 14, verse 3, I will come again, and I will receive you unto myself, so you can be with me there. And perhaps more than anything else, Christ's death on the cross at his first coming is our greatest assurance of his second coming, for without the second coming, what good was his first one? As sure as we are that Jesus died for us on the cross, is as sure as we can be that, yes, as he promised, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Dwell upon the idea that Christ's first coming is the guarantee of his second. What happened at this coming that makes his second a promise that we can trust? This lesson was read by Dr. Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind. Sponsored by the Sabbath School Department and distributed through Hope Channel Australia, this podcast is also redistributed by Hope Channel Germany, Christian Record Services for the Blind. It is also available on SoundCloud and through multiple podcast distributors, including Apple iTunes. And you can listen and watch at the same time on YouTube. Remember... God is always faithful. And here is a disclaimer. Contents of these lessons are not intended to be financial advice, but is general commentary based on biblical principles. The reader is encouraged to seek competent professional advice which will suit their particular personal situation.